Christine, you were pretty rough on some of your co-stars in the book. I just told it like it was. How do you think they'll react to that? Oh, they'll get over it. Stephen Dorn sounded pretty angry. <laughs> Stephen Dorn can write his own book. He said you better watch your back. Oh, well, maybe I should have one of you boys start my car for me. Oh, wait, I don't need to. I can start it from here. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. I've heard your name, of course. You've helped a lot of people, haven't you? Yeah. I'm scared to death, Mr. Monk. The person who did this, he isn't going to stop. Someone's been sending her letters. Horrible letters ever since she started writing her book. Yes, yes, the captain did mention that. Well, the police say it's just an overzealous fan. We thought so, too. But after this, she needs a bodyguard. Bodyguard, right. Someone we can trust. I know you're busy. Oh, I'll do it. How's the investigation going, Mr. Monk? Anything to report? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we have this. A uh, surveillance photo from the radio station. He was standing across the street before the car exploded. The police said he was there all morning. Right. Christine said she never saw him before. How about you? No, sorry. What about the letters? Well, I'm going to see Captain Stottlemyre later today. I should know a lot more then. <sighs> ah, the Silver Globe. Ah, yes. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, this hunk of metal saved her career. She won it for a TV movie about anorexia. The Vanishing Girl, I remember. Mm -hmm. That was the only award show I ever saw. I was probably more nervous than she was. And it went on forever, didn't it? At first, that guy came out, told all those jokes. That was Bob Hope. Whatever. And then the two accountants came out and went on and on and on about all the rules. They were from Feynman and Kelly. They tabulated the ballots. Yeah, and then finally they announced her name, Best Supporting Actress, Christine Rapp. Mm. God, I was so happy. I, I, was, I, I was. I was cheering. I was like, ah! Christine! <laughs> He's gonna kill me. Do I know you? No, you do not. Okay, room eight is just up those stairs. near the airport. Somebody's been shot. Does anybody else know you were here? He must have followed her. OK, so you checked in. I checked in. I was walking to my room. He was right there. He just came at me. Did you see a weapon? A knife. He had a knife. He said, I got you this time. I had a gun, my gun, in my purse. I pulled it out. I wasn't even thinking. I just closed my eyes and bang. Yeah. And you know, we just ran his name. Never been arrested, not even a traffic ticket. Manages a Taco Bell. Before that, 15 years with the city parks and maintenance. Before that, he was in the mailroom at some big accounting firm. Before that, a couple of years of community college. Under the radar his whole life until about an hour ago. And he wrote all those letters? Yeah, it looks like it. We found more in his coat, plus the uh, handwriting matches, at least to me. Plus, he lives in Sunset Heights. That's where the other letters were postmarked. Why would he do it? Maybe he loved the show. Maybe the show meant the world to him, and she betrayed everything it stood for. All right, let, let's just try it. Let's just watch one. Which one do you want to see? See. Where there's fire, there's smoke, and that sounds funny. Slumber party pooper, grounded for life. Well, I mean, they all sound fantastic. Okay, let's just play the first one. Episode 
Episode four, broken arm, broken heart. Ooh, good choice. Episode four. Hey, Jimmy, you want to sign my cast? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody groovy wants to sign my cast. Picture freezer. Picture freezer. The E and the T. It's the same handwriting. Is what? As the mirror and the letters sent to Christine Rapp. I knew I'd seen it before. She wrote those letters to herself with her left hand. Why? So she could kill Victor Timlinson and claim it was self-defense. She was setting him up. No, you're the captain. He was a nobody. Well, he was somebody to her. Wait, are you going in? It'd be a crime not to. It'd be a crime if we did. So it doesn't matter either way. So what are we looking for? A connection between this guy and Christine Rapp. She killed him on purpose, so... They must have known each other. I mean, I don't see anything. you'd like to confess? I looked in Janie's diary. No, no, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this. You mean all the trophies you won playing sports? <laughs> no, not my trophies. I'm talking about her Silver Globe Award. You didn't really earn this, did you? I don't know what you're talking about. Here's what happened. 35 years ago, after this show was canceled, your career was in trouble. I'm not listening. La, 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 la. When you were nominated for this award, you knew it was your last chance, and you would do anything to win. You met a fan named Victor Timlinson. He told you where he worked. It was the luckiest break of your career. He worked for an accounting firm called Feynman and Kelly. They tabulated the ballots for all the big award shows, including the Silver Globes. He worked in the mailroom, which meant he was the first person to see the ballots. I don't know how you did it. Maybe you paid him off. Maybe you flirted with him. But somehow, you convinced him to rig the final tally. Years went by. You probably figured you'd never see him again. But when he read about your big book deal, Mr. Timlinson reappeared. He got greedy. He tried to shake you down. He threatened to tell the world the truth about how you really won this. And you knew if you paid him, he'd eventually want more. They always do. So you decided to kill him. That's crazy talk. You set him up. You sent those letters to yourself. You even blew up your own car. On Monday night, you arranged to meet him at that motel. Or should I say, you arranged to murder him in cold blood. You shot him! You planted that knife in his hand and those letters in his coat. Don't move. Stay there. Stay down. Just stay right there. You're in big, big trouble, young lady. 
That was from episode five, season two. Grounded for life. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Got